We've covered a very wide range of encounters here on the channel, but sometimes we get one that's truly frightening or truly bizarre, and today's story is both. But before we get into today's encounter, if you've had an encounter or know a story that you'd like to have shared here on the show, please email me at the link below. If you like today's story, please gently slap that like button. And if you haven't done so already, especially if you're a return viewer, please hit that subscribe button. While you're at it, take a shot at that notification bell so you don't miss out on any future content. Now, let's get into today's encounters. Late one Sunday evening in October of 2019, a 21-year-old Army reservist named Burton was lying on his parents' couch in their family home in Regina, Saskatchewan, trying to recuperate from a week-long training exercise out at Dundurn. As he's laying there trying to get a little bit of rest, suddenly his phone on the table beside him started to go off. So he reached over, grabbed his phone, took a look at the screen, and noticed that it was his grandma calling. He found this to be instantly a little bit alarming because of the hour of the day that it was. His grandma would typically not call him past 6 o'clock unless it was absolutely urgent and she needed something right away. So judging by the fact that at this point in the time it was about 9.30, he knew instantly that something was wrong and his grandma needed help. So he quickly accepted the call, put the phone to his ear, and almost immediately his grandma asked him if he had plans that week. He had no plans whatsoever, so he said, Grandma, I have no plans, what do you need? And she went on to tell him that for the last week, almost every single night, she could hear something or somebody creeping around the outside of her farmhouse about 15 kilometers northeast of Catter up in northwestern Saskatchewan. Burton immediately said, Grandma, you have to call the RCMP. And she said she had called the RCMP a couple of times that week. They had dispatched an officer to her house. They searched the entire property, but found no sign at all of anybody else being there except for her. His grandma then said, Burton, there's more. He was immediately filled with great concern for his grandma because now she's telling him that there's more to this story, not just somebody sneaking around the property. So he said, Grandma, what is it? And she went on to tell him that a couple of nights that week, her small barn where she would keep her goats and her chickens, which is located about 30 yards away from the house, which she locks up every night, had been broken into. And in the morning, she found a dead goat that was just completely mangled. She was missing some chickens. There was chicken feathers all over the inside of this barn. And she told him that she was concerned that somebody was coming in and pretty much just slaughtering her animals and asked if he would come up in the morning and spend the week with her to see if he could figure out who's doing this and get them to stop. He immediately told his grandma, Grandma, I am not waiting till tomorrow morning. He told her to grab his granddad's shotgun, lock herself in her room, and that he would be out there as soon as he could. Immediately after getting off the phone, he went down into his parents' basement, he opened up his gun safe, he grabbed his 270 along with his 223 grabbed his ghillie suit from his room, duffel bag full of clothes, made his way out to the truck, and then drove five hours from Regina up to Catter. Once he turned onto his grandma's almost 200 yard long driveway, he started honking his horn. He honked it three times in rapid succession. That was his signal to his grandma that this was him coming down the driveway and to meet him at the front door. Once he got beside the house, he parked his truck right beside it, got out he grabbed his rifles grabbed his duffel bag and he made his way to the front door right as he got to the front door his grandma opened it up he stepped in he put his bags down immediately gave his grandma a hug and then told her to tell him everything that was going on she basically just told him exactly what she had told him on the phone but then she said that that evening right before dark she was sitting on her porch looking across this cattle field and right at the very far end, about 350 yards away from the house, she noticed that it looked like one of her cows was just lying on the ground fairly close to the bush line. And she told him that she was concerned that this cow had faced the same fate as the goat and as those chickens. So he told his grandma that he was going to go check it out. His grandmother immediately protested to this because it was so early in the morning, it was full on dark. She kept saying, Burton, just wait for it to be light, go when it's light, don't go out there in the dark. He looked at his grandma, said, Grandma, it's okay, I have a rifle, I'm a trained soldier, I've been out in the bush many times in the dark, I'm going to be fine. 
After saying that, he reached down, he pulled out his 270 out of the case, he put his magazine in, slung it over his shoulder, reached over, pulled a key off a key ring by the door, it was the key for his grandfather's old quad, then he made his way outside and over to his grandfather's old work shed. Once he got to the shed, he opened it up, saw his grandfather's old quad sitting there, fired it up, backed it out of the shed and started making his way towards that cattle field. After going about 100 yards, he came to the first cattle fence, so he had to stop, open the fence so he could get the quad through. He drove the quad through, put the fence back up, and then he noticed off to his right that all of his grandmother's cattle were kind of huddled in this one corner. He instantly found that to be alarming because the only time that they would really do that would be if there was a predator in the area. So his first thought was that more than likely there was a pack of wolves or a pack of coyotes in the area, but he figured it was no big deal. He had his rifle, he was on the quad, and he would be fine. So he continued making his way across this bumpy cattle field, and when he got about 50 yards from where the cattle field met the bush line, he noticed that on the ground in front of him, he could see one of his grandmother's cows. He could see just the back end of it. It was lying on the ground and it was not moving. So very slowly, he moved the quad, kind of went in a semicircle around the side of it so that he could place the headlights of the quad right on the front of this cow. As soon as the quad's headlights hit the front of the cow, he could tell that this thing was not sleeping. He could immediately see that the entire stomach area was just completely ripped open. And his first thought was that this cow had been killed by either wolves or coyotes because of the damage on it and just the way that this cow was mangled matched very similarly to pretty much every wolf kill or every coyote kill he had ever come across before. He immediately unslung his rifle, stepped off the quad, made his way up to this cow to get a better look, started looking around at this cow and it just did not make sense to him because if this cow had been killed by wolves or been killed by coyotes, they would have at least fed on it a little more than what they had. He noticed that the only real damage to this cow, aside from its stomach area and chest being ripped open, was that it appeared that majority of the internal organs were either lying on the ground, mangled, or they were just completely missing. And nothing else on this cow was eaten at all. At this point, he pulled the flashlight out. He started looking around on the ground, looking for any sign of wolf prints or coyote prints or even cougar prints to try to figure out what had taken this cow down. He saw no prints at all on the ground and he found that to be as well very concerning. And at this point he figures, you know what, it's too dark for me to do anything about this right now. I'm going to go back to the house, I'll come back out in the morning, I'll get a better look at this and I'll come up with a game plan from there. And with that he jumped back on the quad, made his way back up to the house. Then he had to break the bad news about the cow to his grandma. The next morning he woke up pretty early even though he had pretty much no sleep the night before. He had a quick breakfast with his grandma. Then he made his way back out to the cow to see if he could figure out what had done this. He spent quite a while looking at the ground all around the area looking for any sign of footprints from wolves or coyotes. And again, even in the daylight he could not see any footprints in the ground at all. He took a closer look at the cow and again he came to the conclusion that this cow had to have been killed by a pack of coyotes or a pack of wolves just because of the damage to it. At that point he came up with a plan that he was going to use the quad to drag this cow a little bit closer to the bush line a little bit to the east fairly close to where he had this large elevated box blind that he would use for deer hunting. And he figured if he put it there, he could go sit in this blind. And if these wolves or these coyotes came back for this cow, he could take some shots at them, maybe reduce their numbers a little bit, or very least try to kind of scare them off the property so that this would not happen to his grandmother's animals again. So he hooked the cow up to the quad. He pulled it over to that bush line. And then he went back up to the house to tell his grandma his plan. Later that afternoon, he gave his grandma a hug. He told her to lock the door. Then he grabbed his rifle and he made his way outside to go to head to his blind. He was not going to be taking the quad with him to the blind this time because he did not want to spook any wolves or coyotes in the area with the sound of the quad. So he was going to be going from the house to the stand completely on foot. 
So as he made his way past that barn, he took a look just to make sure that it was still locked up and secure. Then he made the 200 yard walk to the blind. He climbed up inside, sat down on a swivel office chair. Then he opened up the windows so he had a full view of the field in front of him, a field off to his left. And then through the right window, he could actually see all the way to his grandma's house and he could see that barn as well. He sat there for about an hour and a half. Now it was about an hour before dark. He looked towards the house. He could see the lights on in the windows. He looked back to his left towards where that cow carcass was. And then he looked back out the right window again. And he noticed that something with the barn did not look right. So he quickly picked up his binoculars, looked through them. And he noticed that that barn door was now completely open. So instantly he reached down, he grabbed his walkie-talkie, radioed over to his grandma asking if she had gone into the barn, if she was in there still, or if she'd even gone out to it. His grandma said that she was not in the barn and she hadn't been out to it. At this point he said, Grandma, grab grandpa's shotgun, stay in your room, there's somebody or something inside the barn, I'm going to go check it out. So he grabbed his rifle, he quickly got out of the stand, and then very quickly went across the field hugging tight to the bush line just so if there was somebody in that barn they would not be able to see him moving towards them as he got closer to the barn he had his rifle up at the high ready he was looking over the scope and he moved towards the front corner and then very slowly pieced the pie around the front so that he could look into the barn and hopefully whoever was in there he would see them first before they'd be able to see him so as he pieced the pie, he looked into the barn, and he saw nobody at all, but he did notice that another one of his grandma's goats was just gone. There was a little bit of blood on the ground, but this goat was just nowhere to be found. He looked around inside the barn, no sign of this goat. He went outside the barn and looked around. He saw a few small droplets of blood on the ground, but no drag marks and just no sign of the thing at all. At this point, he had no idea what to make of this situation. He just was trying to process everything in his head, and the only thing that made sense to him was that that barn door must not have been latched all the way. It must have just looked like it was latched, and this absolutely had to be wolves. There's just no other explanation for it, because he figured if it was a person, he would have either seen them go into the barn, or very minimum, he would have seen them come out because as soon as he noticed that that door was open, he had eyes on it at all times. So going on the presumption that this had to have been wolves, he spent about a half an hour looking around the bush in the immediate area behind the barn for any sign of wolves or any sign of this goat. He did not find the goat. He saw no signs of wolves. So kind of defeated, he was like, okay, well... I'm just going to have to either go inside now and deal with this tomorrow or, you know, I got about an hour left. I can make my way back up to the blind and try to pick off some of these wolves or yotes. So on his way back up to that blind, he stopped at the barn, closed the door. He made sure that that latch was actually down and latched in position this time. Then he made his way back to the blind. Once he got to the blind, he sat down in the chair. He leaned his rifle up against the one window. And then he kept looking from his left towards that cow carcass and back to his grandmother's house. About 20 minutes before dark, he was looking back towards his grandma's house when all of a sudden he could hear something off to his left in the direction of that cow carcass. He quickly turned his head, looked, and he could not see anything at all, but it looked like that cow's back leg was lifting up off the ground and kind of looked like it was being pulled backwards he kind of sat there looking at this wondering what the hell is going on so he grabbed his rifle lifts it up to look figuring you know maybe there's a coyote or something on the other side of the cow it's grabbing on its leg and i just can't see it so he had his rifle up he's looking towards this cow through the scope and he can't see any sign of a wolf or a coyote at all but for some reason when he moves his scope over that part of the cow what he's seeing through a scope just looks very distorted almost like looking through like a cellophane or a saran wrap or a shrink wrap it's just a little bit blurry and just looked distorted 
So he's looking towards this cow through his scope, kind of moves his head away from his scope, looks at it, figuring, you know, maybe there's a smudge on his scope. So he looks at his scope. No, it looks clean, looks back through it. And again, it looks just absolutely distorted. So he kind of moves a rifle over, looks across a field at a tree, looking through a scope, and everything looks completely clear. He's completely confused at this point, so he moves his rifle back towards the cow. And again, as soon as the scope gets on to where this cow is, the image is just completely distorted. So he's sitting there with his rifle up, just wondering, literally, like, what the hell is going on? He has no idea why when he looks at this cow, it just looks all blurry and distorted. So at this point, he just took a deep breath. He closed his eyes for a second, opened them up. He blinked a few times. Then he looked back through his scope towards the cow. And this time he could see completely fine. There was no distortion whatsoever. So he kind of breathed a sigh of relief, figuring, okay, it was just my eyes. I had to have had something in them. This explains everything. I, everything's fine now. So he put his rifle down, sat there for a second, when all of a sudden he felt his entire elevated box blind shake like something had just bumped up or pushed up against it. He kind of turned, looked down outside the window, looking down, kind of almost expecting to see, you know, maybe a bear or something had just bumped up against it, looked outside, and he saw nothing at all. After a couple seconds, though, he could feel that the box blind was actually moving, almost like somebody was climbing up the ladder at the bottom of the thing. So at this point, he quickly turned around, opened up the door at the back to look down the ladder. And as he did that, he looked down and he realized that as he's looking down this ladder, everything around this ladder, all the trees and behind it, looked exactly how it looked when he was looking at that cow through the scope. At this point, he just quickly closed the door, stepped back, grabbed his rifle he had no idea what's going on and he was completely freaking out it just made absolutely no sense to him he just knew that there's something that he cannot fully see coming up towards the door of his blind at this point he's in pure panic mode he has his rifle up he's aimed at the door and he's thinking that at any second that door is going to open and whatever this thing is is going to come in so he figured he's going to be ready for it. So he kept his rifle up, aimed right at the door. And after a couple of minutes, he felt the entire blind shake again, almost like something had either just jumped off or just fallen off of the blind. He stood there, rifle aimed at the door for about another five minutes, and he did not feel the blind move at all. So he was starting to figure that whatever this thing was, it is now gone. Hopefully it's left the area or just gone back to the cow. And he figured this was his opportunity to try making it back to his grandma's house. So he slowly lowered his rifle down, went to the door, opened it up, looked down the ladder, saw no distortions this time. So very quietly, but very quickly, he climbed down the ladder, got on the ground, and then just like when he had seen that barn door open, he made his way along the bush line as quick as he could, but staying low, his rifle at the high ready. The entire time, his heart was just racing, and he was really trying to focus on everything around him, looking for any sign of that distortion. As he made his way to about 150 yards from the house, so he's about 50 yards from that first cattle gate, all of a sudden the air all around him just felt incredibly heavy and he was hit with this just absolutely basically incapacitating feeling of dread he instantly felt his body just kind of tense up lock up and he just completely stopped moving he did not even want to breathe he just basically stood there listening to the sound of his heartbeat in his head and he had this feeling like something was right behind him and he wanted to turn around, but at the same time, he did not want to turn around. He took a deep breath. He still had his rifle up. He slowly started to turn. And when he turned all the way around, he just noticed that there's this absolutely large mass of distortion, just like he had seen at the cow, just like he had seen on the ladder up to the stand. And this thing is directly in front of him. And it's absolutely massive. He said it was about 
nine and a half feet tall and he said it was about three feet wide he was just this big blob of distortion in front of him and it just gave this energy of just almost like an extreme malevolence he said he's just completely filled with fear the entire time at this point he figures that there's nothing he could do he has no idea what he's dealing with he can't even see what he's dealing with he just ended up closing his eyes for a second when all of a sudden that heavy air that feeling of dread just like that just completely went away he opened his eyes and all of a sudden he could just see absolutely perfectly again there was no distortion in front of him he had no feeling of dread anymore and just that real heaviness to the air was just completely gone so very quickly he basically just sprinted all the way back to the house once he got inside he told his grandma that it's not safe to go outside that she's not to go outside anytime near dark and that they were going to have to talk about this in the morning that he was in no position no shape at this moment to talk about what had just happened the next morning he ended up telling his grandma exactly what happened and he said grandma i don't know what this thing is i don't know what it wants but i don't think you're safe here i think you need to sell your property his grandma though she refused to sell the property she said that she had lived there for over 50 years and she was not going to let anything force her off her property so even though he tried to convince her to sell she just would not sell and she still lives there to this day and she has had no more experiences of cattle dying goats dying and nobody's seen this creature or this entity ever since Burton still goes to this property he really wishes that his grandmother sold it but because it is his grandmother's property he still does go out there fairly often and he has not seen anything like this again and he has not experienced that feeling he had on that property that night ever since as well well that's it for today's encounter I've heard a couple different stories about these weird cellophane like entities before but I really like to know your guys' thoughts on this. What do you think this is? So please let me know in the comments below. And if you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you next time.